As the Trump administration announced the ending of funding for cost sharing reductions, confusion started about which subsidy was actually ending. I'm Bryn McBride of ABC for Health, and we're talking between the difference of cost sharing reductions and tax subsidies. And they've been used interchangeably when trying to describe the actions of the last week coming out of Washington. We'll look at each of them individually, and let's start with cost sharing reductions. Cost sharing reductions, abbreviated CSR, is a discount that reduces your out-of-pocket liability in insurance. So we're talking about deductibles, we're talking about cost sharing like co-insurance. These are the things that you would pay out of pocket along with your using your insurance. Now, it's a statutory obligation, or it was under the Affordable Care Act, that said that insurance companies would be paid by the feds to be able to pass on savings to consumers for these out-of-pocket costs. Now, this is not for everyone. This is individuals that are a little bit lower income, about 100% of the federal poverty level to 250% of the federal poverty level, and only if they had purchased a silver plan in the marketplace. So of all the metal tiered plans, silver is pretty much the middle of the road plan. And if you purchased a silver plan and you fit within that income cutoff of 100 and 250% of the federal poverty level, you are eligible for cost sharing reductions. If you are an American Indian, there's enhanced cost sharing reductions where you could have access to cost sharing reductions regardless of your income in some situations. So the impact of cutting off cost sharing reductions hurts lower income folks that have purchased a silver plan and American Indians most of all. Let's see now what that compares to for tax subsidies. Now, tax subsidy is also a payment that comes from the federal government to the insurance companies, but then instead of reducing cost sharing in a way such as deductibles and co-insurance and co-pays, it's actually taking a little off of a monthly premium. So cost sharing reductions is stuff that you pay out of pocket. Tax subsidies impacts premium amounts. And the eligibility for these premium subsidies is a little bit greater. It's 100% of the federal poverty level to 400%. So you're catching people from in a broader income spectrum, and it's regardless of the metal tier plan they purchased. So more people are eligible for tax subsidies than are eligible for cost sharing reductions. Now, there are two ways of applying tax subsidies, and this sometimes adds to the confusion. You've heard the term advanced premium tax credit. That's a tax subsidy that you can take right away by anticipating what you think your yearly income can be, and then you could take advantage of cost savings for every month in a, and, and paying a reduced premium right out of the gate. Now, the alternative to that is to not take your premium savings in advance and just pay a lower monthly premium. It's to pay the higher premium amount but still be eligible for a tax subsidy, which means you're just gonna recoup the benefit of it when you pay your taxes the next year. If you would have been eligible for a tax credit all along in the previous year, you will see that as, as either a larger tax return or a reduced tax liability, depending on how your taxes look. So most people have taken advantage of those advanced premium tax credits. They wanna have a lower premium right out of the gate, and then they still do have to reconcile that premium at tax time, depending on what their actual tax return looks like, how it shakes out. Did their income look the same as how they had projected in the prior year? Now, just to help, we have a little visual because there are those different income cutoffs and eligibility. So again, for cost sharing reductions, silver plan only and it's for people that fall within that 100 to 250 percent of the federal poverty level and you can think of that as a family of four making just about sixty thousand dollars a year that's just under 250 percent of the federal poverty level that would be someone who would be eligible for a cost saving reduction and tax subsidies but you can see that tax subsidies ex extend to a much broader population across any plan purchased in the marketplace that has a metal tier so silver gold bronze, platinum, any of those plans um, are eligible for tax subsidies as long as you don't cross that 400% of the federal poverty level threshold. Why are we talking about this now? Well, like we said, there's confusion of which subsidy was ended. When the Trump administration announced on October 12th that they were going to defund cost sharing reductions, it was confusing whether they were ending tax subsidies or cost sharing reductions to some. And it's very clear it was the cost sharing reductions that uh, savings that gets passed on from insurance companies on out-of-pocket liabilities. So what a lot of insurance companies did to compensate was to announce that their rates for 2018, the actual premiums for 2018, are going to be a lot higher. Well, as premiums go up, so do tax subsidies. 
So folks will not feel too much of a pinch of the increase in premiums uh, because their tax subsidies will increase as well unless you're over 400% of the federal poverty level. And if you'll remember for our, from our graphic, then you're not eligible for tax subsidies anymore and you won't, won't get the benefit of having a reduced premium amount if insurance companies raise the rates across all plans. Now this conversation continues in Congress. We have a separate video case tip for you on cost sharing reductions and what the latest developments are. And you can read about some of the compromise bills that are coming out of the Senate and what the future of that might look like. So this conversation is not over, but hopefully you have a little bit better grounding of the difference between a cost sharing reduction and a tax subsidy. Now you can read the glossary of terms that healthcare.gov has available, which is actually makes it very clear to see all of these different terms at play within the marketplace and in the, the world of insurance. Now the IRS also has a lot of information, as you can imagine, on tax credits and how these subsidies play out and what it means to reconcile taxes and tax subsidies at tax time, what that can look like. You can also keep your finger on the pulse and stay engaged in this conversation with us. You can send us an email, ask a question, or share your healthcare story. And you can do all of that on our website at healthwatchwisconsin.org. Thanks for joining us.